Receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord of mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord of mercy. And may Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the face of the people you have made your own, Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. I was thrust thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is a work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in his great mercy, has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoiled or spoilt or soiled and never fade away. 
because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guide, guard you until the salvation which had been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may, for a short time, have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that, when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described. Because you believe and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward. That is the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. They stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, or unless I can put my hand into his sight, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace! Be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this second Sunday of Easter is known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Mercy. What are we asking for when we ask for God's mercy? Because we use the word during the penitential rite at the beginning of our Mass, we often think of the plea for mercy as a petition for forgiveness. But that's not at all what the, script, the scriptures tell us. But not only that, but the word mercy is nowhere near as common in 
the Gospels as we might think. The Gospel we have just heard according to John. John never used the word. But Luke might be its champion with about 10 references to the mercy of God and Jesus or the good Samaritan and the prodigal father. In today's readings, the only time we hear the word mercy is in the second reading from St. Peter, which praises God for showing us mercy by giving us new birth through the resurrection. And what all this comes down to is that mercy is an action. It's not a disposition. It's not an emotion. And if we look to St. Luke's human examples, we first see mercy was what the good Samaritan did as he risked his life and put his goods at the service of the person in need. In the story of the prodigal son, the father practiced mercy by embracing his son and throwing a party for him. And although the wayward son coming home talked about sin, the father said absolutely nothing about sin or forgiveness. That came out of the mouth of the older brother, the resentful one. Mercy is a concrete and generous response to another's need. And this leads us to ask what today's readings tell us about the divine mercy. Well, the gospel takes place on the evening of the day of the resurrection when Jesus appeared in the midst of the disciples. John takes care to remind us that it was evening and the doors were locked. It was as if after seeing Jesus' empty tomb, the disciples had made a, a sepulchre of their own meeting place. They, had, they who had mourned his death had become like the living dead themselves, ashamed of their cowardice, afraid, unable to believe Mary of Magdala's announcement that she had seen the Lord. But John tells us that Jesus came and stood among them. Earlier, Mary of Magdala had gone looking for him, sought him. But now Jesus sought out the disciples. To Mary he had said, do not cling to me, but go and tell my brothers I am going to my father and your father. And by saying this, Jesus handed over his mission, authorizing Mary as the first Christian missionary. Later, when he came to the disciples, the mission that he handed over to them was more than a simple proclamation. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. For whether it was in the garden cemetery or in the locked room, Jesus' appearances were not just revelations of his resurrection. They aimed at transforming, transforming disciples into missionary apostles. And Jesus expressed his act of mercy by breathing into them the Holy Spirit, the vital principle of his own life. Now, Jesus mentioned nothing of their failure to stand with them. He didn't chastise them one bit. Rather, like in the story of the prodigal son, like the father who restored his wayward son as an heir, Jesus gave them his mission. And specifically, a mission of forgiveness. This tells us not only about mercy, but also about forgiveness. And if we think about it, Jesus never focused on sin. Certainly, he criticized mightily people who denigrated or excluded others and had harsh words. 
But sin was never his focus. For Jesus, acts of mercy restored people, empowering them to live the fullness of their own potential. In the long run, and that, that asks much more of people than simply for being sorry for sin. So where does this leave us on this Divine Mercy Sunday? Peter seems to summarize it as he tells us, Rejoice in the God who gives you new birth to living hope. It can be too easy, almost self-serving, to dwell on our feelings and wallow in sorrow. The God who proclaimed that sacrifices have become a burden to me has no need or desire for sadness, but beseeches us, let justice surge like a river. What he wants is action. So on the Sunday, Mary and the other disciples would probably tell us, be careful what you ask for. Be careful about asking for God's mercy. For it comes with the uncomfortable grace of a vocation. After the resurrection, the church is irrevocably called out of hiding and into mission. Like Pope Francis, he tells us to abandon fear of mistakes and instead to fear remaining shut up within structures and rules and habits because outside our door people are starving and are in all sorts of need. So on this Divine Mercy Sunday and in these difficult and confusing times that we live in, we pray that we will find our solace, hope and courage in the wounded, risen Christ, as the apostles did. Then may we be able to join with Thomas in making our own his great acclamation of faith, my Lord and my God. Amen. When we stand and we proclaim the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have gathered here in prayer to celebrate the mystery of our salvation. So let us now bring our request to God, our Father who is always open to answering all our needs. For the Church, that through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust of the risen Jesus, who offers forgiveness and hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all government leaders and civil authorities, that the Holy Spirit may guide them in their decision-making and that hatred, violence and conflicts may cease. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the unemployed and the homeless and all those in need, that we may work to improve their way of life and give them a greater understanding of their dignity and value. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we who have received Christ's mercy and forgiveness in our own lives may in turn be merciful and forgiving towards others. 
Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. For those who struggle with their faith, that they may be inspired by the doubts of St. Thomas and his subsequent faith in the risen Lord. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. And we pray for all our own intentions. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> we pray for all who have died. The, rece the recently deceased, Danuta Zalewska, John Sean O'Hanlon, and Joe Fitzpatrick. At this time, we remember Violet McCann, Eamon Hippany, Edmilson Idris Vaz Fernandez. Yesterday, the anniversaries of Bridie McNeese, Francis McDowell, John Craney, Thomas and Kevin Donnelly, Jose de Costa Pinto, and Maria Sarmento. Today is a month's mind of Dimpna Pronte, and the anniversaries of Michael McConville, Jim Corb, Piotr Modlijewski, Phil Kelly of Australia, formerly of Portadown, Mary McParland, Margaret Lawless, Eddie Leonard, Robert John Bob Coleman, Matthias Gamma, and Manuel Correa. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you are the source of life, and you have sent your Son into the world that we may have that life in abundance. Help us so to live that we may come to the abundance of that life in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you brought to new births that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, o Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and the Eminem, our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Michael, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, o God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them 
as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. So that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us for the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servant, who, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
sans fin.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Now, to mark the Feast of Divine Mercy, there will be devotions here in St. John the Baptist in the afternoon at 3 p.m. And the Divine Mercy Prayer Group, group of parishioners are uh, starting a, a Divine Mercy Prayer Group on Thursday coming at 7.30 p.m. in the Pastoral Centre and if you're interested, everyone is welcome. Now, most of these are financial. The collection this week, £1,689.22p, standing order amount for March, £807. The Troker collection amounted a wonderful total of £9,367, and we're still counting. And uh, weekly envelopes can be collected at the back of the church here. The Jews collection amounted to £4,073, and the Holy Land collection amounted to £712 and one penny, wherever that came out of. And thank you to all who contributed to those collections. Uh, help is needed. Volunteers are needed to clean the pastoral centre. If you're interested, please contact the parish office. Details in your bulletin. Now, if you're on your way home and you're going west, I think, out the Moy Road, don't, don't even think about it. Uh, the road's closed. Um, at half past four this morning, I got a call and there was a fatal road accident just outside the entrance to the two parochial houses. Um, but it gave me the opportunity to put into practice the type of mercy that I spoke of earlier. And it also gave me the opportunity to make arrangements with the police that I'd be able to get out to say mass at half past eight and the rest of us too. So God help all involved, keep them in your prayers. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.